welcome to the beautiful state of Indiana. Today we are going on the Pearl Indiana Yarn Crawl, which includes four stores and one alpaca farm. We're also going to explore the beautiful state park and some of the towns nearby. We're here at our first stop on the Pearl Indiana Yarn Crawl. This is the Clay Pearl in Nashville, Indiana. This town is super, super cute. And of course, the store inside is adorable too. And we're lucky enough today to get a one of a kind tour from the owner, Shelly. Hi, I'm Shelly Hayes and I am the owner of the Clay Pearl in beautiful Nashville, Indiana, Brown County, Indiana. We are a tourist destination for the region around us and we have owned this shop uh, since 2011. And this is our actually our fourth location, but we've been here for three years now. We love it here. Let me show you around. Starting right here is sock yarn. We've got sock yarn from all over. Uh, we have West Yorkshire spinners, uh, self-striping yarns. We have all kinds of hand-painted varieties. And then here's where it gets a little interesting. These are local yarns. The Bean Blossom Fibers is from a girl that works for me. Her name is Amanda. And I think Natalie, you'll get to meet Amanda tonight. Um, and then if we go around here, um, we're gonna kind of continue sock yarn for a little bit. We've just introduced our own line of yarn. It's called Color County Yarns. We used to dye just kind of under the shop name, but this is Color County Yarns. So these are only available here and on our website, but we um, started with spring and uh, summer. And right now I'm in the middle of dyeing fall yarns. So we only have a few and one lady bought all of one color already today. So we're, we're already short one. <laughs> Then we've got your normal yarns around um, Rios and uh, several other Malabrigos. These are the Kramer Perfections over here and then some other wools over there. Lots of fun. We've got our table here with our um, Pearl Indiana display, uh, some, some wool wash by a local girl. And um, all the knitting bags are also by Bean Blossom Fibers Amanda that works here. So we try and keep a lot of things local and um, but we aren't opposed to things that aren't local too. So Stephanie Gilbert is um, a local girl and you may know her if you are in, in the knitting community, you know Rosie Posey Knits. Stephanie, I've known Stephanie since she was two. We carry um, her patterns and her kits and then we kit up some of them ourselves because she can't usually keep up with the kits. So the um, the holly jolly hat the reindeer romp the crystal trellis um, kits and then right now really popular is the spooky hat kit. upstairs we have our fiber and spinning and weaving and needle felting. <laughs> and we also have the cotton up here <laughs> as well. But we have lots of fiber. We sell the um, Coradale fiber by the ounce. Um, we have some hand dyed, hand painted fibers. We have some kits with a spindle. We do teach um, spinning and weaving. And um, so we have usually a better selection of little rigid heddle looms, but we also have the um, baby wolf over here. We have spinning wheels. And then over there's our needle felting corner. And we make some of our own designs of those as well. So that's kind of an overview of what we have here. So, Since the Clay Pearl was my first stop, I'm picking up my passport here. This included the actual passport, which I'll get stamped at every store, and a tote bag for $10.
Welcome to Hobbs Knit One Pearl Two Place in Jasonville, Indiana. So that was Bridget. <laughs> she takes care of the sheep. And these are Shetland sheep, and we're gonna see their wool inside. Lynn and Rick own this shop, and this was actually Lynn's mom's house until they bought it and made it into a yarn store. Lynn makes all of these beautiful items, hand cranks them, there's headbands here, and lots of different things in all these beautiful yarns. Who remembers making these when you were a kid? <laughs> so Lynn and her grandkids actually made all of these pot holders right here, and they're nice and super thick. They're really great for a hot pad as well. So this is something I'm definitely gonna be taking home with me today. All of this beautiful yarn here over the fireplace is hand spun by Lynn. This is all from those Shetland sheep that we saw in the back. And then there's some alpaca from a farm just up the road. These socks right here are hand cranked by Lynn on an antique sock machine. She does the entire thing, including the heels on the machine. And look at all of the fun colors that they come in. We have a few more items from the sheep here. These are some roving balls. They're like so fluffy and so soft. And then this right here is an entire fleece. Welcome to our third stop. We're at Rebel Pearl Yarn Shop in Bloomington, Indiana, and we are going to get a tour today from Karen and Mary. Hello, I'm Karen White. I work at Rebel Pearl. Welcome. Yarn, woodworkers, yarn notions, wonderful bags. We have some amazing needles and stitch markers. I have way too many of these. <laughs> and then of course, the yarn. This is all Rebel Pearl yarn dyed by Mary. We're not sure she ever sleeps. We also have Indigo Guinea, another local dyer. She has a yarn truck. You should check it out. And this lovely, beautiful stuff is flannel cakes fiber. And uh, if you knit or you crochet, your next step is to learn how to spin. And when you do that, you become even more happy. So I suggest trying it. We have some spindles. We have kits, we have patterns, we have notions. We, have, we even have yarn bowls to keep your yarn that you get and we'll wind it for you. Come to the yarn shop right now.
Um, I make a Halloween kit every year because it is my favorite holiday. So I'll pick a theme. Uh, the first one was just women in horror. <laughs> and then uh, water horror, and then this one was ghosts. And this year we're doing witchcraft. <laughs> so we, um, you, if you get the kit, you get like uh, 13 pre-picked movies, 13 mini skeins and little baggies, so you can open them up one at a time, and each one comes with a movie quote. And then we make the wrap together. Right now we're doing it on Monday nights online. We're gonna go on a tour around to see if we can find the fluorescent yarn, which is black light reactive. So let's go find some. So when we got in last night to the Clay Pearl, we didn't have enough time to actually walk around Nashville. So this morning, it's really fun to just kind of take in everything. There's all these little restaurants. I think we might go get a cinnamon roll. Maybe we'll get some lunch and some coffee on our way out on the way to the next shop. Now let's make our way back into the countryside to visit Ty and Lindsay of Red Hill Fiber Mill. We're here at Red Hill Fiber Mill in Crawford County, Indiana. We're on 40 acres of land. We've got some alpaca here in the back. Let's head into the store though and see what they have. So welcome to Red Hill Fiber Mill and Alpaca Farm. I'm Ty Higgins. And I'm Lindsay. So we started raising alpacas, I think in 2018. Mm -hmm. And uh, we purchased our fiber mill in 2019. So here at Red Hill Fiber, uh, we focus on a couple different uh, fiber blends. Um, we have our alpaca wool, merino wool blends. Um, and then we have our pure alpaca. We are alpaca farmers by trade. So we like to stay true to that and always have a pure alpaca offering. Um, next is what I said I would never do, and that is spin superwash wool. However, we spun this up for a special occasion, absolutely loved it, and uh, we just kind of stuck with it. So um, the handle's really nice, it's very durable, it holds color brilliantly. Um, yeah, we just became a fan of it, honestly. Um, and then our final line is our naturally twisted yarns, um, and it is a US grown merino wool um, spun by us here at Red Hill Fiber. Um, so we're huge on the sustainability, the U.S. grown, uh, the traceability of our fiber. So that's that's kind of what we're trying to produce. Our new line is our Artfully Twisted by Red Hill Fiber. Um, we kind of have that 
uh, self-striping um, idea. Uh, it's kind of trending right now. So kind of how we get that is we dye the wool. Um, we dye in the wool, I'm sorry, uh, our roving. Um, so we'll dye it all out and then we'll draft it and then we'll spin it up. Um, so that always repeats um, and we get a nice repeating colorway. So right now we have six colorways. We're sold out of one. Um, and we plan to grow that line to probably 10 colorways and then 10 solid correspondings. Um, as you can see, the reds go with the reds. The chestnut go uh, with the blue and chestnut. Um, and we're out of gray dye, so we're on a hold for the gray. Um, but yeah, so we love them. Uh, this is my Oregon Ducks themed hashtag go duck colorway. I'm a big Oregon fan. So shout out to everybody there uh, in Eugene. Uh, good luck this year. So yeah, our colorway names are usually, well, we do a couple things, but most of them are named by our children. So we have an eight-year-old Paxton and a three-year-old Liam. Um, so Purple Turtle is our son. Hashtag Go Ducks was me. Um, Sandy Residence. And then this yellow is actually called Pumpkin Guts. And that is our eight-year-old son all day. So um, we also do some running polls on our private social media groups too. Uh, and take, I think they named this one October sunset in the spring. So in 2023, we were asked to do the Pearl Indiana Yarn Crocs limited colorway. Um, they're the reason I started spinning Superwash, honestly. They wanted a 98-2 uh, Superwash nylon um, base. Uh, and they kind of gave me a, we went fall with a pop of purple. Um, I don't really know how I got there. <laughs> uh, so this is what the roving looked like died up before we spun it. Um, so we did offer it in four ounce braids as well for the hand spinner so they could spin along uh, while everyone else was knitting along. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what it looked like. Uh, I was just trying to pick those. For us, Spruce does really well. So this kind of bluish green is really in right now. Um, so we wanted to do that. And then the olive uh, is also very popular. So we're just looking at a way we can combine those. Um, yeah, and it's just kind of neat how they variegate to each other. and. It spun up beautifully, I think, and it, it really, it gave a nice fall uh, vibe. So these are, um, this is a 80-20 Moreno alpaca blend. Uh, this is a 80-20 or 80-10-10 alpaca Moreno bamboo blend. Um, this, is, this is pure alpaca, this is pure alpaca. And then everything else is dyed uh, pure alpaca, besides the white. So the whites and the fawns are our bases. Um, this copper is actually russet, which is a color um, over fawn. So it's actually this, this yarn, it's just dyed over. It gives you lots of different hues and different depths of color. Um, so my wife really loves dyeing over color. I know it sounds counterintuitive, but you get a lot of, you get a lot of color variations um, dyeing over fawns and browns. Behind the storefront is the fiber mill and dye studio, and we were lucky enough to get a tour. Uh, well, welcome to the dye studio. Um, so we have two 120 gallon uh, dye pots. Um, we also scour wool in these, um, but they're awesome. They do have a mechanical hoist, so it makes lifting out large batches of yarn um, really great. So I think we can dye up to about 45 pounds in here. Um, so either in the wool or in yarn form. Uh, we typically, right now, we don't dye that much of a single color in yarn form, but we have goals. We have, we have the pot, so uh, that's the main part. So that's the, as we expand, that's the goal is to be able to utilize this fully. Um, so right now we're cooking in a couple of uh, 30 gallon pots and a 20 gallon pot um, and tons of uh, burners. So. Uh, we do all our own dyeing here in the house um, from raw fiber. So when the fiber comes in, we wash it. We will dye it in the wool there, um, or we dye it in the wool as far as in roving um, to make our self-striping yarns, or we will dye, um, dye like our own basis. So we'll just spin up 100 skeins of two-ply spore, and as we need colors, we'll kind of dye them up as we need them. So. Um, but yeah, that's kind of our dye process. I don't have a lot of room to work with, um, but it gets the job done.
Welcome to the Little House of Yarn in Princeton, Indiana. As you can see, we're right across the street from the courthouse. We're in this like town square. It's really cute. There's a coffee shop right next door. It's too late for us to get coffee right now, but I can imagine coming here, getting some coffee and sitting during the day. We've got lots of local stuff to show you. So let's head inside. These yarn bowls are from Amanda of Tyndall Designs. They're actually 3D printed, so they're nice and lightweight. So if you're somebody who likes to use a yarn bowl and you wanna bring it out and about with you, they would be perfect for that. So these stitch stoppers are from Fox and Pine. There's so many different fun designs and you can just use these to keep stitches from sliding off of your needles. This yarn is from Fiber Owl Yarn Company, and they are in Grayville, Illinois, which is not too far from here. Next up is Needle Fingers, and they are out of Sumner, Illinois. What I really like about this is they have all these little pairings together with pattern suggestions. So you can go over and see what pattern is suggested and what two bases she suggests putting together. She also has started introducing a self-striping base. So you're gonna see all of these holiday themed colors. This one I really like, it's called Funky Christmas. And there's little swatches to show what the stripes will look like. Yellow Xenia Knits is also a local dyer. You can see that they have some yarn right here, but they also make project bags. All in all, we spent three days driving to these five shops in Indiana. What amazed me the most is that we saw yarn spun or dyed by shop owners at most of these stores. Every shop was unique and every person we met was so kind. Thank you to the shop owners, Shelly, Mary, Ty and Lindsay, Rick and Lynn, and Diana for allowing us to film. And a special thanks to Karen for giving us a tour. We are two states in with 48 more to go. Make sure to follow along with the hashtag United Skeins of America. We'll see you in the next one.